to Everyday Enlightenment. I'm your host, Patty Teal, and I'm coming to you today from beautiful Sedona Pago Retreat, 163 acres in the high desert with panoramic views of the Red Rocks in Sedona, Arizona. Today's guest is Richard Webb, and I actually met him at the Retreat Center a couple of years ago when he was just starting his new business. And the business was fascinating because it was combining music with affirmations. Welcome, Richard. Hi, Patty. It's great to see you and connect again. Oh, it's great to see you, too. So your business has come a long way, hasn't it? Yeah, it really has. Can you tell them how this idea came about? Absolutely. It all started way back in 1995 when I was trying to find a wife. I had dated so many different girls that at one point I decided to literally count the number and there was over 100 girls on this list that I'd come up with that I'd gone on dates with. Statistically, I should have been married by now. There's something going on. So that was the point where I realized that there was some block that I needed to clear. And so I did a meditation and I asked the question, what is the belief that's holding me back? And that's when it came to me, it's too hard to fall in love. It was like the universe opened to me and revealed to me what that belief was that I was holding on to. When that answer came to me, immediately the song popped into my head, it's so easy to fall in love. You've heard that one. It's so easy to fall in love. Is that a Linda Ronstadt? I can't remember for sure, but yeah. Linda Ronstadt, yeah, Yeah. (laughs) way back. I immediately knew if I was to listen to that song that something would happen because it was the direct opposite of the limiting belief I was holding on to. Thank goodness that Linda Ronstadt did that song, right? (laughs) Right. So it wasn't just that you were extremely picky. There really was some subconscious belief that you were holding that told you it was just hard to love. Yeah. Yeah. It was too hard to fall in love. And that song Mm -hmm. was, it's so easy to fall in love. So I played that song over and over again. It was almost like magic that some girl popped up and I had a girlfriend in two weeks from doing that. You know, when you struggle with something for a long time and then you have an experience that all of a sudden it's the complete opposite of what you've been experiencing, you take notice. You know that there was a result that happened from the music because that was the So you knew immediately that it had to do with the song. You put the two and two together at that point? Yes, I did. I started dating this girl and for a couple months we went out and we got to a point where I had to decide, okay, where is this going? or we both realized that it wasn't going into marriage. At first I was a little discouraged. I was thinking, you know, the song didn't work. You know what? It seemed like it did, but it it didn't. And then, and then I realized, well, after, so let me back up a little bit. I, I stopped listening to the song for a few months, kept going through that dating process. And I thought, okay, I'm tired of, doing this again, I'm going to listen to the song again, because I knew something resulted from the song. So again, a second time, I listened to the song, and some other girl shows up, and I could see the same pattern happening, also knew at the same time, and I knew it quicker this time that she was not the person I wanted to marry. Strike two. (laughs) Strike two, (laughs) oops. And and then I had this thought that came to me, it was very interesting, it's like, wait a second, the song doesn't talk about marriage. It just talks about it being easy to fall in love. And and so I'm like, the song actually worked perfectly. The tangible result was me falling in love easily. That's all it talked about. Exactly what the song was putting into your mind, I understand. Yeah. And and so it was at that point I thought, okay, I just combined another song that talks about families and marriage and stuff like that, which I did. And so I played both songs together or one right after the other. And then it was like a month later, a friend invited me to go be a roommate in his apartment. And it was at that place that I ended up meeting the woman I ended up marrying. And we got married probably, it was eight months after I moved into that apartment. That was my first experience with using music to manifest a certain outcome. That is really a beautiful story. And you know, the interesting thing is, so we went on, we've we've had a lot of kids and it's, That was, what, it's been 20 years that we've been married now. Wow. You look too young to have been married 20 years, but I will believe you because I know you have (laughs) how many children? I have eight children. Wow. So I could show you pictures of all my kids, and I have a 19-year-old who's in college now. Wow. Yeah. Time flies, yes. It goes by fast. Mm -hmm. And even though I had that experience that many years ago, 
I think I may have thought about it, but I never thought it was possible to use songs to create other results in my life. Funny how that works, but you know, there was no repository or library of songs that you could just pick out. Okay, I've got this problem. I, I feel stress. I, I need a song for stress. I, I want to achieve financial abundance, so I'm going to choose this song for that. I have these health issues. There's no library. People don't think of songs in that way. They think of entertainment and do I mm -hmm. like the song? Do I like? They, they don't think that the song could be used to program an end result into your life. Mm -hmm. I never considered myself a songwriter. It's, it's a hard thing, you know, coming up with a song, getting it arranged. Get, you know, that seems like a huge overwhelming thing, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you're not a songwriter. So I never considered that. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I had experience number two that I realized that this is what I needed to do. If you'd like, I could share that. I want to hear that. I've heard it before, but I want our listeners to hear it because it's pretty incredible. It was end of 2012 when I was interested. I had this desire to come up where I wanted to travel to this island down in Panama. It was just, I had a fascination with islands. For someone who has a large family, for someone who has so much going on, for me to be able to manifest that trip, it was kind of a big deal. Money and all that kind of stuff. There was a program I discovered called the Mind Movies, and they use images in the back of the computer screen, images and affirmation statements, and also you choose a song to go with it. So I did this, and I created this elaborate program with all the stuff I wanted. I had so many different goals in there, and pictures, and I spent a lot of time creating this. But the song I chose to go with it was called Top of the World by Karen Carpenter. It's a very beautiful song. Again, it's an oldie, so... Do you well, remember? I'm an oldie, so yes, I, I do remember. I didn't mean to remember you were an oldie. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. I, I do remember it. I remember she, it. And she has such a beautiful voice, too. Karen Carpenter, yeah. That was yes. really amazing. Mm -hmm. So I had this song that was playing in my head for like four or five months. I'm on top of the world looking down at creation. Literally, I mean, over and over again. So I played that, and I actually was able to go do that trip down to Panama, but... What was even more amazing was what happened after the trip because almost as soon as I came back, I started discussing with a friend about a potential trip to not the North Pole, but a place close to it called Svalbard. Most people haven't heard of Svalbard, but it's literally the farthest north that you can fly in a commercial airplane. One thing led to another, and only a couple months after I finished the Panama trip, I was able to travel with him to the Arctic Circle and spend like four nights on this island. <laughs> For the last four to five months, I've been playing the song, I'm on top of the world, and here I am literally on top of the world. I mean, yeah, so- this, this is fascinating because, you know, so many people do affirmations and sometimes they're disappointed, frankly. And I think mm -hmm. it's because they're not getting into the subconscious. So they might be saying, I'm the best at this. Inside, their subconscious probably say, oh, no, 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 you're not. Exactly. And so, somehow the music is able to just bypass it all. Yes, absolutely. Well, first of all, the reason that happens is because we have years and years of patterns. We've experienced life a certain way. Life is hard. I'm not good enough. To be able to overcome that, you've got to have emotion, and you've got to have intensity, and you've got to have repetition. Mm -hmm. The song is the best way to tap into the emotions. And the lyrics of the song kind of direct that emotion to achieve a certain outcome. There's a psychological component. There's a lot of great music out there. But the thing that's missing is the psychological component, which comes in the form of the lyrics. And so that's, what, that's why what I do is it's different than what other people do that are musicians and songwriters. They're creating great music for entertainment. And I'm doing it a little differently. I'm thinking of what's the outcome that we want to have with this music. We want to achieve certain things. And so I take the affirmations and I write the words in a way that it basically covers all your bases. Like when I manifested the outcome of mm -hmm. it was easy to fall in love, but it wasn't the person I wanted to marry. Basically, I realized that there's other components. So I, I think of the lyrics in terms of what are all the things. For example, if I have a song about wealth or energy. I don't want to just put, I'm going to be wealthy. I want to include stuff about integrity and honesty because I don't want people achieving wealth in a dishonest way. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 
It wouldn't bring yeah. happiness that way. So you, you need to right. do something that also brings you joy with it. So yeah. Yeah, because there's the possibility that that if you don't specify some of these things, then you may accomplish it in a way that you don't really want. Like yes. you, you, you got to be holistic. Mm-hmm. At, you have to watch what you <laughs> wish for, basically. Yeah, and you have to be clear. Like, mm-hmm. what is it I really want? You want more than that. You want to be wealthy, and you want to be wealthy in a, in a way that's, you know, that's honest with others. You don't want to go rob a bank. You don't want to feel inspired to go rob a bank because that's not really what you want. Right? So anyway, so that's just one example. But um, back to the scientific reason, there's there's a part of our brain called the reticular activating system that is kind of acts as that block. It's a filter for change. Okay, so the reticular activating system, it blocks change. Anytime we try to change something that's that's been one of our patterns, music is able to bypass that in a big way. So when we combine the music and also the intentional lyrics that are used to create a certain outcome, then we are able to get past that a lot easier than just repeating an affirmation. So you really are changing the wiring of your brain, possibly. Exactly. Yeah. That's fascinating. Music affects the brain on so many different levels more than other things. Mm -hmm. And that's why affirmations don't don't really work. And sometimes I'll tell people, I'll I'll say, "These these are affirmation songs, and they'll get confused. They'll think, oh, well, affirmations don't work. These also probably won't work. That's not actually true because... This is so. Much, this is not really affirmations. It's like a whole other level of programming your mind for success. Yeah, Music is the more. best way to tap into that emotion. Mm-hmm. And, and you know how Patty, like those favorite songs that you have. Yes. Uh, you ever find those songs get stuck in your head? Oh yes. That happens to every every person. It seems like when they get that mm-hmm. favorite song, it's playing in your head. So now what happens, those, that song that's playing in your head, the words of the song are, so if we can get the song stuck in your head, then that even accelerates. Sometimes little melodies get stuck in your head too. I really don't know what that's mm-hmm. about, even without the lyrics, but sometimes it's like, okay, stop, stop, if it's really catchy, a catchy melody. So, yeah, I've had that happen too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I bet this would be really good for kids also. Do you do kid songs as well? A lot of kids really like the songs. It's not yeah. like they need special music, but so yes, just the kids like the music and it would probably work just the same way with little people as well. It, it does. And, mm-hmm. and it, uh, I, I gave the CD to one lady and she emailed me later and, and said that her kid would only let her play this CD like when they dro- drove around in the car. Oh, that's yeah. funny. Yeah. So And so. kids can listen to things over and over and over again. They it's just part of their wiring, I think. Just like movies, they can watch them a million times. Exactly. Yeah. So at this point now, you've had the experience of finding a wife through your song. You've been to the top of the world. Have you put it into a business yet at this point in your life? Yes. Yes, I have. Okay. Well, so as a follow-up to that story, there are experiences you have in your life that create such an impact that you embark on a new path in your life. And and that's kind of what happened when I realized I had that light bulb moment and it was like, I can accomplish anything if I just put my intentions into the lyrics of a song. Mm -hmm. It wasn't anything that any guru, any teacher or anyone had ever told me. I never Mm -hmm. heard. And I've been to tons and tons of seminars and conferences. I've studied this stuff for many, many years. And it was that little voice, that little inspiration that came to me that, said you can accomplish anything if you put your intentions in the lyrics of the song. That made me realize, okay, I have to be a songwriter. Right. And, and so I didn't even believe I could be a songwriter. I mean, I, I thought, okay, I have to do this, but how will I do it? And I thought, okay, I can, I can take karaoke songs. I can swap the words out. And so I started doing it, going along that route. I would hire people to sing it. And, and then at some point, um, I had a number of songs, like ten, at least 10 different songs that I had shared with people and they were getting such amazing results just with what I was doing. And I'm like, okay, I have to take this to the world. I have to create more and more songs. And so I did that. Or so I t- it took it to an attorney and he said, oh, I'm sorry, you can't do that anymore because you're going to be viol- in violation of copyright laws. Oh, mm-hmm. 
so I either had to stop the whole thing or I had to take it to another level, which meant write my own songs. Like, that's a lot of work. I, I don't know if I'm comfortable doing that. I don't know if I, I can do that. I had a song come to me, like when I was sitting in my car one day. Mm-hmm. And it was called Today is the Best Day. And I just thought, you know, that might be a good song. Maybe I'll like start working with it. So I just started going down that path and I started having the melody come to me and I f- finished out the, the, the words for it. And I sent it off to an arranger and singer and he produced an amazing song out of it. Like, maybe I can do this. You can do this. I love that story. You know, I'm a songwriter myself. And when I feel like I'm really in tune with the universe and really on the right track, they come to me. They just appear. But sometimes you have to really notice, oh, I've got a song in my head. And then I always want to write them down very quickly before I forget them. Is that kind of how they sometimes come to you? Song ideas come in different ways. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes I'll be in the shower and a melody will come to me. Right. Or sometimes it's more of like, I need a song about this. Mm -hmm. Kind of complete this album. Right, yeah. And I've even had a few songs like come to me in dreams. Mm -hmm. I used to wake up with complete songs all orchestrated in my head, but that hasn't happened to me for a while, but that's really wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So I was reading some notes that you sent me, and you talk about how you've added binaural combinations. Did I say that correctly? Mm -hmm. And what exactly does that mean? Well, binaural beats are are something that has been used with uh, brain entrainment for a long time. It, It helps to synchronize the two hemispheres of the brain. And some people will use binaural, like for re- binaural beats for relaxation. They'll use it for just other, other reasons to help them feel better. I had always wanted to, to do whatever I could to make these songs as powerful as possible. Like we didn't talk about this yet, but I also adjust the frequency to a specific frequency that's harmonious with nature. It's not the standard frequency of modern music. So Mm -hmm. all the songs have that as they are. But binaural, it takes it to a whole new level. That's kind of like how binaural beats works is is there's there's one side that plays in one ear and it's a little bit different. It's a little bit off from the other side. But it's usually the same track, just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And, and, And what it does is it creates another tone it basically brings both sides together and that creates harmony and unity and but i've done something completely different and this was a discovery that just happened this past september it was to actually use one completely different song in one year and one completely different song in the other year oh yeah most people have that reaction are they in the same key at least no so one hemisphere of the brain is doing something different interpreting it's hearing something completely different than the other side. Wow. Is that an unpleasant experience? The only thing I have to laugh because I did a performance not that long ago. I used to perform a lot. And I didn't rehearse with the person that I was performing with. And they started playing. And I know the look on my face must have been like, because it, it seemed like they were playing in a completely different song than what I was singing, different key, different music. And it was a little bit disturbing. So. Yeah. And, and that's what most people's reaction, because most people would never consider doing that because it mm-hmm. sounds confusing. It, sound, it would sound chaotic. But right. here I experimented with this and I've had a number of people experience this. And this is kind of like where all of this is going. This is what I've discovered for me and the people for the first couple of days, it could be chaotic. It could, it could sound a little confusing. But after that, it actually becomes kind of nice. You kind of enjoy it because um, your, bra- your brain is, uh, is getting used to it. And so it's, it's like if someone sat on the couch the whole life, never exercised, and you were to tell them, go run a mile. Mm-hmm. That is going to be uncomfortable for them. Right. Is it going to be good for them? Yeah, but it'll be painful. You know, it'll be, you know, your body won't like it. And so when you do it at first, it, it, you can have that, you have that effect. So you pair these two different songs together for people. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah. So I have about over 50 songs now. Mm-hmm. I've done. And so we could take literally any combination. If you were to multiply that out, that would be like over 2,500 different combinations. Mm-hmm. Like 50 times 50. 
But the one that's kind of my favorite to start with, I have a song called The Love Within, which mm-hmm. is all about, about increasing the love for yourself. And another song I call I have called Truth Now Sets Me Free. Now, those kind of help to create a foundation because mm-hmm. if you have love and you have truth, you can accomplish anything. That's kind of the foundation of what I like to suggest when people mm-hmm. start using the binaural combinations. So in one ear, you've got, I love myself more and more each and every day, those kinds of words. And in the other ear, you've got truth now sets me free. So it's increasing the level of truth. It's increasing the level of love you have for yourself. And that combination itself has been so powerful. A lady I found on Facebook who is about to commit suicide, she even posted, she's like, she's done with this, she's ready. So, and she agrees, she's like, I, I like music, I'm willing to try it out. And within one day of doing that, she had totally lost her desire to kill herself. One day? One day of doing that. Oh my goodness. And on the second day, the second day after doing it, she said she had learned more about herself than she had in all the years of personal development. When you increase truth and love, guess what happens with fear? It can't be there. Yeah, Yeah. so fear gets reduced and she's like, starts telling me, she sent me six pages of all the changes that were happening in her life. Common theme is that she's losing fear. Like fear fear was like being diminished. Richard, you accomplished nothing else in your life just to have known that this process saved this lady. That must be so gratifying to you, must really touch your heart. I can't believe our time is almost up. I want to end with your song that's about loving your children or being a good parent. It's called Guiding with Love. Mm -hmm. And I realized I needed a song about parenting. And it just so happens it coincides with Father's Day coming up. And it's a male voice that sings this. So, yeah, I think you'll like it if you want to go. Yes. And before we do, I just want to mention you have all sorts of topics. If people are looking for abundance or love, just... Mm -hmm. Can you go through just a few of those before we play this song about? Sure, this, mm-hmm, sure. this is the Today album. This is kind of a variation of 12 songs that cover a variety of different subjects. This is the Financially Free album that uh, covers songs about financial abundance. This is the Feel the Love song, all kinds of topics about love. And this is the Healthy and Whole album that covers all aspects of physical and emotional health. Well, I am so impressed with all that you've gotten done in just a short couple of years in addition to being an amazing parent, I'm sure. So uh, let's just end uh, with this song about parenting and loving. And I want to say goodbye now and thank you so much for sharing everything that you've shared with us today. Bye now. And now here's Guiding with Love by Richard Webb. is so filled with gratitude as a parent I feel a love so true and with patience I show the way I see them thrive each and every day and they feel love in the world I freely give And I'm guiding with love I'm guiding with love Guiding the children with love And with kindness I show How much I care I listen with love So that I'm aware In all we do As they develop their skills And follow through I inspire them to be their best Increasing knowledge and confidence And we openly Relationship is great, and I'm guiding the love.
for tuning in today. Be sure to visit Richard's website, transformationalsongs.com, where you'll have the opportunity to receive a free song. Have a great week, and I hope you'll tune in again next week. Bye now.